Dear Bhagwan, what is consciousness, Bhagwan? What is there is only consciousness, but consciousness has several levels to it. When I say that all that is there is only consciousness, it does not refer to your consciousness. There is a basic form of consciousness which is nothing but intelligence. In India, we call that Mahat. This Mahat or basic consciousness becomes all that is. That is the universe, the galaxies, the stars, the plants, the trees, animals and you and me. This consciousness is the seer, is the seeing, is the seen. You could also say it is the observer, it is the act of observing, it is the observed. And in fact, the observer and the observed are one and the same. And here we are, the granddaddy of all quantum weirdness, the infamous double slit experiment. To understand this experiment, we first need to see how particles or little balls of matter act. If we randomly shoot a small object, say a marble, at the screen, we see a pattern on the back wall where they went through the slit and hit. Now, if we add a second slit, we would expect to see a second band duplicated to the right. Now, let's look at waves. The waves hit the slit and radiate out striking the back wall with the most intensity directly in line with the slit. The line of brightness on the back screen shows that intensity. This is similar to the line the marbles make. But when we add the second slit, something different happens. If the top of one wave meets the bottom of another wave, they cancel each other out. So now, there is an interference pattern on the back wall. Places where the two tops meet are the highest intensity, the bright lines, and where they cancel, there is nothing. So, when we throw things, that is, matter, through two slits, we get this, two bands of hits. And with waves, we get an interference pattern of many bands good so far. Now, let's go quantum. <laughs> An electron is a tiny, tiny bit of matter, like a tiny marble. Let's fire a stream through one slit. It behaves just like the marble, a single band. So, if we shoot these tiny bits through two slits, we should get, like the marbles, two bands. What? An interference pattern. We fired electrons, tiny bits of matter, through. But we get a pattern like waves, not like little marbles. How? How could pieces of matter create an interference pattern like a wave? It doesn't make sense, but physicists are clever. They thought, maybe those little balls are bouncing off each other and creating that pattern. So, they decide to shoot electrons through one at a time. There is no way they could interfere with each other. But after an hour of this, the same interference pattern is seen to emerge. The conclusion is inescapable. The single electron leaves as a particle, becomes a wave of potentials, goes through both slits, and interferes with itself to hit the wall like a particle. But mathematically, it's even stranger. It goes through both slits, and it goes through neither. And it goes through just one, and it goes through just the other. All of these possibilities are in superposition with each other. But physicists were completely baffled by this. So they decided to peek and see which slit it actually goes through. They put a measuring device by one slit to see which one it went through and let it fly. <laughs> but the quantum world is far more mysterious than they could have imagined. 
When they observed, the electron went back to behaving like a little marble. It produced a pattern of two bands, not an interference pattern of many. The very act of measuring or observing which slit it went through meant it only went through one, not both. The electron decided to act differently, as though it was aware it was being watched. And it was here that physicists stepped forever into the strange never world of quantum events. What is matter? Marbles or waves? And waves of what? And what does an observer have to do with any of this? The observer collapsed the wave function simply by observing. Basically, at a psychological level, uh, you are the question, who am I? You are that question. And once the question goes, you are gone with it. If there's a question, you are there. No question, you are not there. So by asking who am I, you are sustaining the I. There is no answer to this question. If the question realizes there is no answer, the question will disappear. And along with that, the questioner also is gone. Now what happens in that case? Suppose you are gone. Then how do you know that you are there in the first place? What happens from now on is, the observer becomes the observed. You are defined by what is being observed. Suppose if you are in a room, the television, the walls, the lighting, the people around, because they are there, you are there. Remove them, you are gone. In other words, the teaching here is, the observer is the observed. That is, if there is a tree, because there is a tree, you come into existence. The tree only defines. In other words, you are the tree. Because there is a wall, you come into existence. The wall is what you have become. You are the wall. You are the tree. You are other people. The observer has become the observed. This is for the enlightened person. But if you go into a still higher state of oneness, still higher state, then you will actually become the tree. You will experience the tree breathing. You will actually become the wall. That is a super state. We are not talking about those states. That also is possible. It may come, it may go. But what happens is, you are gone. And whatever is there, that only are you. You are nowhere. Therefore, you are everywhere. Whatever is there, that only is you. Not that you have become that. But because that is there, you come into existence. You are there. You are defined by the other. But the person is completely gone. So however much we explain this state, you cannot understand till you actually get there. But now more and more people are rapidly getting into that state. So I am sure many of you sitting there will soon be able to go into these states. Then you will know for yourself what it is. However much I talk, it cannot be communicated. You have to get there. And for that to happen, the speed at which the senses are coordinating, that must be slowed down. When you are seeing me, you are not listening to me. When you are listening to me, you are not seeing me. Every sense is functioning independently. But it is happening so fast, it looks as though they are all working simultaneously and therefore you feel you are there. But if it is slightly slowed down, you are gone. That is why I said it is a neurobiological transformation. I expect in the next few months that quite a few people should be able to get into that state. Now, a lot of people are moving into that state.